story to tell. The Turkish military is a powerful Alaska force in the Middle East. In an effort to support rebels in Idlib these days, along with fighter aircraft, the T-129 attack helicopter has been used by the Turkish Air Force. According to Aladunu News Agency, during attacks from late February 2020 to the present, the Turkish Air Force has assisted jihadist groups in conducting a series of air strikes on a number of positions of pro-Syrian forces in Idlib. Local military sources said the Turkish helicopter attacks had left about 34 civilians dead and 100 others injured. The Turkish air forces use of the T-129 helicopter has shown the fears in Syria battlefield. This type of helicopter possesses attack power that is not inferior to any heavy attack helicopter. In some situations, it even outperforms colleagues from Russia and the US. Observers say that the deployment of T-129 helicopters to the Syrian battlefield is thought to create an additional advantage on the battlefield. T-129 attack is actually a derivative version based on A-129 Mangusta of Italian Air Force. The attack program was started in 2007. Augusta Westland and Turkish Aerospace Industries have collaborated to develop an attack and tactical reconnaissance helicopter that meets the requirements of the Turkish Armed Forces. The helicopter is equipped with state-of-the-art indigenous mission computer, a Unix, weapon systems, self-protection squeeze, and the humid mountain queuing systems. The airframe, weapon systems, and other components are based on the proven Augusta Westland A129 predecessor. The first fly was took on in September 2009 and was officially introduced to the public in 2014. To date, 59 aircraft have been produced at an estimated price of $3.2 million each. The helicopter is optimized for hot and high conditions, rugged geography both during day and night. Compared to the original A129, it also has some important improvements to suit the requirements of the Turkish army. Basically, the exterior design of the T-129 retains many sharp lines of the original Augusta Westland product. It is much smaller and lighter than contemporary attack helicopters like the US AH-64 or Russian Mi-24. The maximum takeoff weight of the T-129 is only 5 tons. The length is 13.45 meters. The height is 3.4 meters and the rotor diameter is 11.9 meters. Like other common attack helicopters, the T-129 cockpit is designed for a crew of two, sitting in tandem. The weapons official are sitting in the front cockpit and the pilot in the rear, a little higher. The fuselage of the T-129 is very angular and armored for ballistic protection. The composite rotor blades are also able to withstand hits from 23mm cannon fire. There is a mid-mounted 5-bladed main rotor, a 2-bladed tail rotor at the rear. The landing gear is fixed to single-wheel main landing gear legs along the forward sides of the fuselage with a single-wheel tail lap under the vertical tail fin. Overall, the T-129 inherits many of the same qualities inherent in the other specialized attack helicopter designs of the world. Power is provided by a pair of LHTEC CTS-804A turboshaft engines, delivering 1,361 horsepower each. 
much stronger than the original A129. The engines have been designed to incorporate infrared heat signature reduction measures. The helicopter can reach a maximum speed of 278 km per hour, a stable cruise speed of 269 km per hour. Weapons will be stored externally on the stub wings mounted on the east side of the fuselage. A total of 4 hard points. The total weaponry payload that the T-129 can accommodate is 1.2 tons. It could be anti-tank guided missiles, air-to-air -air missiles, and 70mm guided rockets. In addition, a 20mm 3 barrel gun mounted on the nose turret would be an additional firepower needed. One of the key protective measures incorporated onto the T-129 is the electronic warfare suite include active and passive countermeasure systems such as a countermeasure dispensing system, a missile warning system, laser warning system, radio frequency jammer, radar warning receiver, and infrared countermeasures. The digital cockpit of the T-129 incorporates two color multifunctional displays keyboard display unit, a Phoenix Central Control computer, and a 4-axis automatic flight control system. Turkey also developed for this helicopter an advanced flight control radar, which is similar to the US Longbow used by the AH-64T. It allows to fire anti-tank guided missiles in the fire and forget mode. The latest upgraded version of the T-129 helicopter is attack FAZ-2. Turkey recently announced that it had successfully conducted its first flight for FAZ-2 on November 13, 2019. New equipment has been integrated into the new helicopter, including electronic warfare systems and some upgrades in radar warning devices. Other basic parameters of the T-129 attack remain the same on the attack FAZ-2. Consider the pride of the Turkish defense industry. T-129 has received the attention of countries in the Middle East and Southeast Asia. Currently, Pakistan has ordered 20 aircraft and the Philippines has ordered 10. The trouble related to the acquisition of S-400 air defense missile systems from Russia has greatly affected the production of the T-129. Turkey's Avarsai says that, due to the purchase of the Russia's S-400 Triumphs air defense missile systems, Ankara had serious problems with several major British and American military partners. Specifically, the United Kingdom has refused to provide engines to equip the T-129 attack helicopters. The first consequence of this situation is that Turkey cannot complete the contract for Pakistan. In the long run, is bankruptcy of Alaska weapons program. The UK did not give a reason for stopping the supply of helicopter engines, but it seems that London is working closely with Washington to put pressure on Ankara. Turkey might choose to buy Ukrainian engines instead, but it is difficult for them because the Kiev government will have to look at the American face to decide. With the latest sanctions, the US has shown it can do a lot to Turkey, not just with the F-35 stealth fighter, but also many other weapons. My video of ATAC T-129 ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.